Hello and welcome to the Thursday, May 30th, 2024 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. If you haven't checked into some of the editions that we have now for our honeypot, uh, maybe time to check again. We do have a great diary today by one of our undergraduate interns going over some of these editions, in particular the full packet capture and the seam that Guy integrated with the Honeypot. Now, these additional uh, tools do require some more substantial processing power. You often can't get away with a simple uh, Raspberry Pi for this, but if you have a virtual machine running on a little bit uh, more uh, substantial system, or maybe like one of those N100 uh, mini PCs, then this is certainly doable. In particular, you need a little bit more disk space. In this diary, our intern Joshua Joby uh, does go over some of the pivoting you can do with this data where you are looking at the initial, for example, access log in the web server, and then try to figure out what else happened and uh, try to collect more data about this particular event, in particular from full packet captures. Of course, a lot of traffic to the honeypot is not encrypted. It's just using HTTP, not HTTPS, which simplifies this quite a bit. Maybe in a future edition, we can add something like Polar Proxy or so to do some SSL, a man in the middle here uh, to get a little bit more data for uh, the packet captures. So take a look at the diary if you're interested in these additional tools and there are links at the end of the diary that explain where you can get the additional parts, in particular the, the shield uh, seam with uh, the additional uh, dashboards and the like. On Tuesday, I talked about a warning checkpoint put out about brute forcing of its VPN solutions. Well, we got now another advisory from checkpoint that appears to be quite a bit more severe. It's a new vulnerability that checkpoint patched in its uh, VPN uh, solution. It's an information disclosure vulnerability that's currently already being exploited. The original advisory regarding uh, weak passwords and using multi-factor authentication was actually related to this vulnerability. Apparently, before there was a patch available, accounts with a password-only authentication were vulnerable to this particular exploit. So in short, apply the patch and make sure that uh, password-only authentication is not allowed. And talking about uh, passwords and their limitations, Okta is reporting that they're seeing uh, quite a bit of credential stuffing against uh, cross-origin resource sharing enabled uh, authentication feature on their uh, customer identity cloud. They state that they are warning uh, customers who may be affected by this, but they're also listing various log events that you may want to review if you are an Okta customer. The only real fix against credential stuffing, of course, is a requirement to do some kind of phishing-resistant multi-factor authentication refer to Okta's uh, advisory again for some of the solutions that they're specifically offering. And well, I guess today is sort of one of those uh, password-related uh, podcasts. We have another story here, and that's where a researcher was able uh, to uh, break an older password that was used uh, to encrypt a Bitcoin wallet. Similar stories have happened uh, before where uh, the victim here did lose access uh, to their Bitcoin wallet, had a quite substantial amount of Bitcoins in it, about uh, $3 million. Uh, and uh, two researchers were able uh, to now brute force the password used to protect the wallet. The trick here was in part that uh, back when the password was created and the password was 11 years old, the user used a version of a RoboForm, which was used to create the password. And uh, well, its random generator had a common weakness in that it used the timestamp as a seat. So in order to recover the password, uh, they were able to restrict the range they had to brute force quite a bit, knowing approximately when the password was created. 
This weakness has long since patched in RoboForm, but it's a good reminder that passwords and encryption in general do not get better with age. Well, and this is it for today. Thank you for listening and hope you like this podcast. Hope you subscribe to it. And, uh, well, it's available via Alexa. It's available on YouTube and uh, pretty much any podcast platform out there. If I'm missing one, then uh, please let me know. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.